We had a wonderful guest all the way from Alberta, Canada, Michelle Gunderson. She is with us one more time to my immediate right. Michelle is a yoga teacher and she is also a teacher of creative writing. And she will tell you more about her program in a few moments as soon as we get past the introductions. We have Mercy to my extreme right. To Mercy's left is Sissy, her sister Sissy Gamash. This is Michelle, it's me, Banu Suresh. To my immediate left is Annie. To Annie's left, Janet Oldenbrook and Judy Jacob to my extreme left, who has been with us in many episodes. Thank you, all of you, for being here with us today. Today, Michelle is going to address the issue of moving into stillness. She has this wonderful concept about space, raga and dveja, the attraction and what was the other word you used? Uh, repulsion, or things repulsion. that we push away. Right? Yes. Aversion. Please, tell us a little more about it. We were very curious, and we had some questions. So, Janet, you had the first one, right? Uh, I had more of an observation when you were talking about, I don't know the Indian names again, I'm sorry. Raga and Deveja. Deveja, so pushing, and pushing away and pulling toward us. When we were doing the balancing poses, I had so much fun playing with that because it really helped me keep my balance when I was pushing away into the floor and then pulling my hands together and pulling my legs together and, and just experiencing what it was like to, to feel balanced because I'm pushing and pulling at the same time. Wow, that's Very really, nicely put. Yeah. Well, wonderful <laughs> observation. And it's really interesting because we have different words for those. I think what you're talking about would be prata, uh, praksha pratipaksha, which is a different kind of pushing and pulling, which <laughs> or a different kind of stretching out. But I love it, the way the words can uh, work in different ways, that that kind of pushing and pulling can be helpful. And one of the things we talked about, too, uh, last time is the way when we're pushing and pulling in that opposite kind of way, when we're pushing stuff away and we don't want it. and. You're talking about a different kind of pushing, I like that, right? But when we push it away and we don't want it, our minds get stuck and they spin and, and our lives don't feel very good. We're not, we can't be present, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and when we're pulling stuff toward us, I have to have this new car, I have to have this new house, I have to have this pose work out just the way I want it, right? Or it's not right, again, that, that doesn't bring us to that centered, quiet space. So I love what you're talking about because what uh, you mentioned, Janet, is what we're aiming toward instead a different kind of um, stillness, really, that you were finding in the pose, and that's part of what we'll, that's what we'll focus on today. Yeah. Paul Grilly has a wonderful expression. He calls yoga moving into stillness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that addresses uh, our friend Paul's question as well about yoga being having another dimension than just stretching. Paul suggested we use another term. For lack of another term, we have to continue to use the word, but just so we are aware that stretching is what it's all about. And it's the beginning. It's the stepping stone to the next level because it releases all those endorphins. And then to talk about the writing, mm -hmm. it's releasing all those stops. So Michelle, uh, Judy, you mentioned something else well, that was yesterday. Curious, the, the postures that we, we were doing really create a stillness. We're focused and still mm -hmm. It's very meditative. Mm -hmm. Right. And that really does create a stillness within the body. Focus. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where the creativity comes from. What a beautiful question. Thank you. Because um, often we think that creativity and, and the particular focus for me is writing, but it, 
all the arts uh, works this way. We think that it comes, for writing, we think it comes out of words. If I just create more and more and more words, then the right words somehow will come, and I can, if I can just think of it, that, that I'll get it right, and you can hear already, that's not the creative space. I right? love the way you express it. <laughs> <laughs> the mind just, you know, I, I had students starting from that place. I start in that place sometimes, right? right? Instead, paradoxically, the writing comes out of stillness. Because when we find that quiet space, we're connected with the deepest part of who we are. And when we're connected with the deepest part of who we are, what we write always has roots, always has roots. So we find that stillness, it's what we'll focus on today. We find that stillness in yoga. Then when we sit down to write, we don't have that monkey mind going. We don't have that, oh, I forgot to pick up the kids and I've got to get to the grocery store on time and what about the milk? That's just monkey mind, that's just words. You're Instead, gonna have to go stones. to her retreat now. Yeah. yeah. How do we find out about your retreats, Michelle? W, you head to my web website, and all that's the information right. is there. Uh, if you go to www.languageofyoga.com, so that's www.languageo. Uh, F Y O G A dot com. Did I spell it right? <laughs> That's, That's lovely. Name. That is really a lovely name because yeah. I was looking for names, Sanskrit names, mm -hmm. and I googled Sanskrit names or Sanskrit language for yoga, and your mm -hmm. website came up. Yes. That's how I contacted you. Uh -huh. It was really good. It was wonderful to, to discover you and have you on our program. Mm -hmm. It's great, and it's great to be here, Bonu. Thank you so much. And, and that's exactly what we're learning. We're learning the language of yoga, the language of our bodies that translates into that language of our, our most creative selves. And it, uh, it's so difficult for me to connect your mind with, like, when you're trying to keep balance, and you have, I have the monkey mind yeah. yes. talking about. <laughs> and it's like, it doesn't leave me so alone. So <laughs> so so I'm, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. And I'm like trying to keep it. And you're trying hard. to keep your mind in silence, mm -hmm. but it's hard. I mean, you know, it's for me, it's a big challenge. Yes, and so that's exactly what we'll work on today, because that's exactly we the space that creativity comes from. The second expression in yoga, it's called yoga. Yoga chitta vritti nirodha. Nirodha <laughs> means a chitta vritti. Chitta vritti, as in many thoughts bombarding inside your head. Uh -huh. Yoga is all about evacuating your mind of all the thoughts, and that's what Michelle is teaching us. To do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Michelle, whenever you're ready, let us know. Okay, well, uh, let's get started. And um, so today, again, the practice is about finding that stillness so that um, when in our, in our lives are, we're riding waves and instead of the waves knocking us down, we can just be still, be quiet. We can even dive through the waves if we, if we want because that mind is quiet and we're uh, in space. So in, in, in the right space for creativity to begin. So in the last few um, sessions, we've been starting with standing. So we're going to start with a seated posture this time, Komukasana. And for some, you'll just keep the legs like this, but you might want to sit on a blanket so you that... You stole my blanket. I did! <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie will use her blanket that I've stolen again. I have one. And, uh, okay, oh, you don't So we'll that. share. We'll share the props. And also, oh, you can no, use no, those phone no, blocks. Yeah, we can use those, box. yes. Yeah. Right? So some will be seated like this. If you have more experience, you can come into a different version of the posture. Make yeah, sure you your straps are back. Handy. I'll use your block. That's all right. <laughs> so we'll cross one leg over for those who want to do something a little bit more complex, right? One leg crosses over, the knees are all right. You can do like this or just sit in a cross leg position. That's it. So let me show again how we come in. You can just cross the leg over and then sit back. The legs are in a V. This is um, Ardha Gomukhasana, half Gomukhasana. And sit up on uh, some height as much as you need. Make sure your knees feel comfortable. Everyone's knees good? Okay. Then you can place if you've got a strap handy. Did I steal your strap on? No, but now you tell me. <laughs> no, I'm stealing it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Everyone, the strap that you had right beside you. <laughs> place it over um, the right shoulder. That's it. And then reach that arm up to the sky. Remember, we worked on space a couple weeks ago, so you really want to get that space here. Bend the elbow, find space with that left arm, and reach up, hold the strap wherever you can reach. And for some, I'll just turn my back to you just for a minute so you can see. Some might interlace the hands like so, all right? 
And this is a place where stillness begins. Before we get really still, though, I want to tell you this means uh, cow face pose. Anybody know why it's cow face pose? I love I've it. I've been given no. different interpretations. I don't know <laughs> I, what it I, is. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Do you have I don't like a cow's butt. <laughs> 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 Actually, the knees going one over the other is the cow's mouth. Yes. I've been told. And this is the ear? Yes, I love it. Heard? I had okay. to mention that. That's the same thing I've heard. So you this the, the ear and the, the one ear and the mouth. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so moving into just a quiet space watching the breath, and we use the breath as a tool to help us to become quiet. We won't hold much longer, we'll talk more about this on the second side. Letting the face be soft. And slowly let the arm go. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay, good. And then to come out, come back onto hands and knees. And then we'll come to the other side. So crossing the right arm over right arm. This is why I teach writing, because I can't remember the words sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> My students used to say, no, Michelle, that's not your arm, that's your leg. <laughs> <laughs> so cross it over, and then sit back. Make sure the knees are comfortable. Otherwise, you can just sit in a cross-legged position. And then stretch that. Place the strap over the left shoulder. Stretch the left arm up to the ceiling. And then bend. Reach the right arm and hold wherever you can. Keep the chin parallel to the floor. Can you get that? Yeah, you've got it. That's it. Good. It's a wonderful stretch for the um, shoulders and for um, uh, good for the hips as well. Draw the low ribs into the body. And then the reason we follow the breath is that the breath is always with us. So the breath keeps us present. So Sissy, you were asking earlier, how do I get rid of that monkey mind? Yeah. And so this is it. Just watch the breath. Be curious about the breath like a child. Wow, I've never seen this breath before. What's it like? And as you do that, the mind begins to quieten. And then slowly release the arm. Come back onto hands and knees to come out of the posture. Nicely done. And once again, do you feel the stillness? Yes. Yeah. Changing. When you come up, come up carefully. Come up onto hands and knees. That's it. And then just move the palms, and we'll come up into standing. So if you have um, back issues, or if you're newer, the feet are hip distance apart for this version of Utkatasan. I think you have a different name for this one, too. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, it's fine. Good, it's fine. <laughs> so for, if you're newer, feet apart. If you're really experienced, you can have the feet together. So we'll stand in an open Tadasana. And then just raise the arms up into Urdhva Hastasana. Really reach the arms. So find that space that we were working on a couple uh, sessions ago. And then find that quietness. Yes, good. And then just bend the knees. Keep the tailbone tucked. Bend the knees. The knees track same direction as the feet. And slowly release. So straighten the legs again. And I want you to keep your feet where they are and just look down at your feet. And just notice if they're like this. <laughs> so if they are, I want you to turn them forward. That keeps the knees happy, right? So keep the knees happy. And also, part of paying attention to the different parts of our bodies, that helps us. Oh, sorry, you can release the arms. <laughs> you're such a good student, right? <laughs> I forget to tell you, and you know, you just, like five hours later, you're still got your arms up. <laughs> We're training ourselves to be good listeners. It's, yeah, and, and you are. It's wonderful. Oh, I'm so good at listening. So I better be make sure that I'm good at speaking then. <laughs> so we, we have the knees facing forward, right? So And the feet facing forward to protect our knees. Right? Then we'll do again. Oh, yeah, what I was saying is that when we know how we position our bodies, that helps us quiet, quiet in the mind. You don't say that in, in the US. Somebody told me you don't have the word quiet in. You make it quiet. <laughs> That's a Canadianism, I think. Inhale the arms up. Keep the tailbone tucked. And then bend the knees, bend at the ankles, and reach up to the sky. And once again, follow the breath. Keep the face soft, soft in the face. Just look forward. You gotta bend That's forward it. like this? Like and that? Not, for, not, not the way I teach it. <laughs> no, <laughs> straighten like this. down, I'll talk about that in a minute. And then straighten up, lift up, and then reach the arms down. So Bono might have a different way. Again, we have, it's all, it's all yoga, but we might have different variations on it. For us, we go just straight down. For us, that's what we do. Do you do it differently? 
Uh, I don't know how she... It is funny. We've got, like, I see people doing this. Yeah, you keep your palms facing each other. And right, like this. And you just, just like sitting on a chair. Right. That's the way we describe it. Yes, yeah, like sitting on a chair. Okay. And I'm glad you did that because you're actually moving us into the next posture, which I call the overdraw some three, right? I have to say I call now. <laughs> so just watch for a minute. We're going to get into this, not the classical way for me, but uh, slightly easier way. So we'll just reach the arms out. Actually, you can do this with me. Oh, wow. The reach the arms out and then extend out. And then we really need the mind to be still. No kidding. That's it. <laughs> and make the hips level. So bring that raised leg hip down. Oh, I hate it. And slowly release. We, we have to bend this, this knee. Or we'll just... talk about that. In, yeah, just come on out, and then I, I can tell you about it. Okay. And did I hear from over here somebody whispering, I hate this pose. You can <laughs> <laughs> the one who hates it can't get out right <laughs> on all of this. <laughs> And that's a deveja that we talked about, right? The pushing, pulling, pushing the deveja is pushing away. So instead of pushing the pose away, where can you find the stillness? Where can you find that space where there's just, mm, this pose is yummy. This pose makes me feel joyful. And my mind is quiet. So as you move onto the pose the second time, we were different, doing different sides, right? So you just do the side that you didn't do already. As you move in, just think, oh, yum, this is easy. I love this pose. And then just watch the breath. All right? Okay. So we'll do it together. We'll get that collective energy. Ready? So starting in Tadasan. And then exhale, reach the arms out, lift the leg up. Virabhadrasan three, warrior three. Bring the hips level. So the raised leg hip, you have to bring it down, 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 down. So the hips are level. And then feel, oh, this is yummy. This is joyful. And slowly release. Okay. Oh, is it better this time? Oh, Not yet. <laughs> you just have to love yoga teachers. They get you into all these pretzel positions and then breathe. And then they say enjoy it. <laughs> and pretend it's yummy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice word. What I loved about what you said is that's such a truthfulness. That's a whole other day, right? <laughs> and we need to be truthful with what we're experiencing, so that's great. Uh, Uttanasan. So let's turn and face in. And um, yeah, and what, yeah, that's it. You guys face this way. That's it. Yeah. Feet are hip distance apart, hands to the hip crease. Make the hip, feet face forward. Lift and open the chest. I get to smile at Janet. <laughs> you can smile at your partner. And then hinge down. Keep the chest open. Wall the elbows. And here, the legs are strong. When the legs are strong, the thighs press back. Then the abdomen can be quiet. The abdomen can release. And when the abdomen releases, and the throat softens, the mind can become quiet. And then change the cross of the arms. Keep the chest open. the shoulders away from the ears. That's it. And let, relax the head. Relax the head down. Good. And then to come out, hands to the hip crease. Inhale up. Lead with the chest. And this time we'll step right into downward dog because we're good at this. You know how to do this. This last and just step right back into it. The legs and the hands are quite far apart. So uh, bring your hands a little further forward. Any, that's it. Yeah, good. And then press the weight toward the thighs. That's it. Open the chest. And then again, watch the breath. And slowly release down into forward hero. Knees apart, toes together. We did this last time. This is my favorite one. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so finding that beautiful space, <laughs> finding a breath. And then we'll just come into um, a backbending posture called Shalabhasana. If you're um, a real beginner, you can just do alternate arm, alternate legs, all right? Or if you have a back issue. The full posture will bring the hands to the sides, right? Hands to the sides. And I'll just demonstrate it up here so you can see me. Keep the tailbone tucked, so make space. We talked about space before in the low back. Make the legs work. Inhale, then as you exhale, lift the legs, lift the arms. Lift and open the chest. Shalabhasana. And breathe. 
it. That's the heart. It's hard to breathe. That's the hard part. <laughs> cool. And then slowly release down and rest. Oh. You're gonna rest your forehead on your wrists. It's a nice way to rest. And watch the breath. Good. And we're just gonna go once today because I want you to get into a twisting posture so everyone come up to sitting. Do we have to? No, we don't have to. <laughs> It's nap time. Yeah, Bella that, that wants to do it again, so should we do it again? <laughs> no, I think we'll move right into twisting here. that look of yummy makes me think of chocolate. Oh, that yummy. Oh, yeah, we did a, a chocolate meditation at one of my retreats. That, that was sounds good. Yeah. I'm liking that. It was very yummy. How do we get to these retreats? Yeah. 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 www.languageofyoga.com. Oh. <laughs> so start in a seated posture, and you can sit up on your blanket just so that you can bring that lower low back into the body. And we'll do Mary Chiasan in three, is what I call this. So we bend the right leg and draw it in. This leg presses down, this lifts up. Then bring the right hand back, lift the left arm up to the ceiling. And then draw it across, twist from the navel. That's it. Mary Chiasan three. Keep the chest lifted and open from the grounding of that left leg and the right foot lift the chest and with each breath every time you inhale lift every time you exhale twist and slowly release nicely done not not good to do right after eating right so i hope nobody just had a snack right before a burrito right when you burrito, yeah. <laughs> but it's so Yummy. good for the internal organs right it's very nice massages yeah. it yeah Ready for the second side? Mm -hmm. How's yes. everybody doing? Feeling really massaged? Good. 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 All right. Tell you tomorrow. <laughs> Tell you tomorrow. <laughs> Such a, again, truthfulness. You got to have a show on truthfulness. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what yoga does to us, right? It does. It does. It makes us truthful about our bodies, right? And then we can speak the truth of our, of our words, right, in our writing. Sissy, yeah. you're right there with us. You are. <laughs> so draw this knee in and lift the chest. From the grounding of the leg, lift the chest. Then left arm comes behind, reach that right arm up to the ceiling, and then twist from the navel. Each time you inhale, lift up, draw the arm across. So draw the arm right across. Oh, you're at the front, so it's not big, see, isn't it? That's it. Good. Each time you inhale, lift. Each time you exhale, twist. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist the ribs. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist the chest and shoulders. The mind, let the body be still so the mind can be quiet. And slowly, slowly release. Nicely done. And the pose, we do it, the pose is in a particular order in my tradition I teach, my Angara Yoga, so that um, we end up with quietness at the end. And so we end with a forward bend, because it's calming to <laughs> So this time, did I steal your strap? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I have was your careful, I hid it this time. <laughs> have your strap or somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> this time we'll get it ready. I think I didn't have you do that last time. And if you want, if you have a block, I'll steal your block. <laughs> you can have something to rest the head on if you want, right? So um, if you're fairly flexible. Then have the strap just handy. Reach the arms up to the sky. Then hinge forward. Keep the chest open. Keep the chest open. And then look up and lift the chest even more. It's like a back bend action, even though it's a forward bend. And then hinge forward just from the hip crease. And just relax. Release the um, neck. And everyone come out for a minute, because I want to help you with this posture a little bit. So lift the chest and come on out. Is the belt there for a reason? The belt is there for a reason, and that's exactly what I'm going to speak to you oh, about. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the reason the belt is there, I'm going to show you, actually, um, one of my teachers, um, uh, Rob Walker. I'm going to show you the Walker maneuver. <laughs> he invented this one. So have your strap right here for a moment. So right in the notch of the, of the uh, collarbones and right below the navel. Right. Now lift the chest. Hello. Oh, yeah. So just like this. So it's like it's glued to your front side. Like okay? a tie. Like a tie. Thank you. That's yeah. exactly it. Now hinge forward and notice if it comes away. Don't let it come away. Don't let it come away. As soon as it starts coming away, you've gone too far. 
So you might not be bending as far as you did last time, right? That's it. So let's do the posture again. And if you were rounding forward like this, this is not really good for the spine, right? But keep, pretend you still have that strap there. And the reason we have this strap is so that we can keep that openness. Make sense? Okay. So have your strap handy. Reach the arms to the sky. Inhale. And then as you exhale, hinge forward. Hold the strap or hold the edges of the feet and look up. And here's where you use the strap if you need to. Remember how you had that strap glued to your front side? Am I doing it right? No, you're doing it right. Much better, yes, better. And then hinge forward. But don't come too far forward, right? Not too far forward. Can I adjust you here? Yes. What you want is this lifting it up. Yes, feel a difference? Want a straight line. Ah, See? Want a straight yes, line. and now look at your navel. Look toward your navel. So look way down, look way down. Uh -huh. Look down more, down more, down more, down more. More? Look, not with this, just with your neck. Just look down. Look down, look down. Look at your belly button. Yes, this is it. I got it now. Now, do you feel how there's space? Uh, how about like we me? talked about last time. Yeah, I'll help you too. So this is what you want right here. Good. So you would benefit from the strap. See how you are hardly reaching the toes, but with the strap, then you can pull. Yes, and then just hinge forward just a little bit and tuck the chin down. And everybody else, that was a nice long hold. Were you feeling any deveja, aversion? We're calling you names now. <laughs> <laughs> and come on out. <laughs> Stretch the arms, look up. That's part of what we do. When we hold a little bit longer, we can notice what's happening in our minds. That's it. And slowly release down. And let's do Shavasana as we did a couple of sessions ago, and let's have the heads at the center. If you want, you can place some support beneath your head so that um, you can tuck your chin down. Right? That helps the mind to be quiet. Some people, some people don't need it. You can try. One of my teachers says, "Well, try it this way. Uh, try it. Do it. Do it my way this time, and you can do it your way for the rest of your life." She says. <laughs> I love that. It's usually when she's asking us to do something hard. <laughs> right. I'm gonna try it your way. Okay, just take a little nap, guys. Yes, yeah, <laughs> nap time. Oh. So letting the palms face the ceiling. Roll the shoulders back and down. Let the baby toes drop toward the earth. That's it. Relax the shoulders. And just a couple breaths. to come out. Are we ready to come up on? <laughs> <laughs> Bend the knees. I think this is my favorite pose. Roll to the, you get to do this at home. Roll to the right side. Oh, yeah. And come on out. Use your hands to post oh. yourself up to sitting. Just settling down. <laughs> just so as you're settling, settling down, in. Down, yes. I know. What happened? Is over? <laughs> <laughs> There. Michelle Gunderson, our special guest from Alberta. Michelle is a, a yoga teacher in Canada, and she is also a teacher of creative writing. Thank you, Michelle. That was a wonderful program. If you want to go to one of her retreats, www.languageofyoga.com. This is Banu Suresh signing off. Visit my website if you'd like a copy of Yoga Secrets, www.yogaexpress.com. We also will send you a copy of the postcard to help support your practice. On behalf of Judy, Janet, Annie, Michelle, of course, uh, Sissy, and Mercy, thank you very much for watching us. May we go back and show us? Absolutely, you go right ahead. It was wonderful. It felt great. Thank you so much. We did enjoy it, and we definitely got a very different perspective. That was wonderful. It was very uh, nice. Pleasure I think we're all ready to write, aren't we? Yeah, yes. Let's come in, come and write with me. <laughs> we're taking care about it. <laughs> You're gonna write yeah, when you feel it uh, next day. Even you feel it right at <laughs> night, late, early in the morning. Oh, That's